Hey everybody, how's it going today? Uh, in this video, I just want to show you the camera collection as it sits right now. Um, that's without the camera that's filming this, uh, which is the X-T3 and the uh, 16 to 55 2.8 lens with the vertical grip. And uh, uh, and of course the tripod I'm using is uh, the AT214 Enduro uh, four section aluminum legs and the uh, Kirk Enterprises BH1 uh, ball head. That's my favorite ball head. I've owned a couple of those over the years. I left and then I came back because it was the best one. Anyway, um, so just showing you what uh, what's here. Every once in a while I do this and I take photos anyway for insurance purposes uh, just so they can see them all in one photo. Uh, but uh, anyway, this is what I'm this is what I'm using at the moment. I can't find my uh, Nikon N70. I'm not sure where that's at. I moved and it's in a box somewhere. I'm sure. I'm just not sure where. That's the first film camera I bought back in the early 90s. Uh, first good film camera, let's say. Uh, I actually had another Fuji point and shoot um, before that, but uh, as far as adjustable everything, uh, the N70 was my first. Uh, then I went Mamiya, then I went uh, to a Graflex 4x5 camera, which took some awesome shots. Um, that was a, a pretty a pretty awesome camera. I, got, I was fortunate enough to take that to Yosemite uh, to try to duplicate some of Ansel Adams' uh, pictures with uh, a similar kind of film. Uh, the long story short is they didn't come out like, like Ansel's. <laughs> Uh, there's a big benefit, I think, to living there and uh, inventing the zone system and developing and printing your own negatives and prints. So, anyway, that's neither here nor there. It was uh, it was fun to do. So what I got here is uh, for camera bodies. I got the Nikon D810 with the uh, Kirk Enterprises uh, L bracket, so you can go vertical or horizontal. It works with the uh, it's an Arca Swiss adaptable uh, plate that uh, locks into my tripod. Um, on it is a uh, 50 millimeter Nikkor uh, 1.8 pancake lens. I think it's like a five element lens. There's another one right here too. I just got a couple. Uh, I ordered one on eBay and then I found one at a camera store before it showed up, so I bought that one too. Uh, I've got the Sigma 35mm art lens, which is all-time favorite wide-angle lens. Uh, that lens is as close to flawless as you can get in a wide-angle, in my opinion. Uh, next to it, I've got the uh, Zeiss Milvis 35 f2. Uh, very good, very good lens, good color. It's a couple ounces lighter than this one. It's a little bit smaller than the Sigma art, so I do like it when I'm uh, packing light. I took that one to New York actually, and um, I'll pop some pictures up on the screen to show you what uh, what these lenses do, um, or what I do with these lenses. Let's say that gave me some credit. Uh, I got a uh, Hero Three. Uh, it's a little bit older GoPro um, with the Joby SLR legs. I bought these legs because. Um, I was going to New York and they don't allow tripods up on the top of the Empire State Building. And um, I like to shoot skylines, I don't know if I mentioned that. Uh, so I got a lot of pictures of skylines. Um, but when I was going there, they, they wouldn't let you pull out any kind of support whatsoever. You can't have a monopod, you can't have a tripod, uh, you're, not putting, you're not putting a Joby on the railing either. So if you're going up there, take a stabilized lens, that's what you want, an optically stabilized lens. Anyway, uh, and shoot wide angle too, because that'll just give you even sharper pictures at whatever shutter speed you can get out of it. Uh, Nikon AFS VR, 105 millimeter VR uh, macro lens. I've owned two of these. I bought my first one and I sold it when I, I was like, ah, I could use the money and I want to buy another lens. I've been buying and selling lenses for 
23 years. So I've had a lot more lenses than what's sitting here, but this might be the most I've ever had at one time. Uh, because at some point it's just it's just too much stuff and I'm kind of at that point right now to be honest with you uh, anyway uh, That's an awesome lens. Uh, that would be a great lens for portraits uh, really nice background blur uh, the, It auto focuses quickly uh, And it's got optical stabilization. Uh, it's awesome and uh, it doubles as I say it doubles as a macro lens because it's such a good portrait and all around telephoto. Macros is just one thing that it does well. Um, anyway, uh, we've got the Rokinon. I forgot what the focal length is 12 millimeter, 2.8 uh, fisheye. This is obviously a fisheye lens, so it's special uh, special purpose lens, good for. Uh, uh, weddings, special effects at weddings, and uh, in stadiums or really tight areas, but in stadiums it gives you a really cool expansive uh, uh, field of view. Um, I'll pop one up on the screen for you. Uh, that, one's, that one's pretty fun, and it's not terribly expensive either. Uh, vastly better than Nikon 16mm 2.8 that is such an old lens design. Um, Super old, lots of chromatic aberration. This one performs way better, and it's cheaper. So, uh, let's see. Going across from the Nikon's um, Zeiss. I really like Zeiss lenses. This is the Milvis 50 millimeter 1.4. We've talked about that before. Best 50 millimeter I've ever owned. Uh, I have used an Otis 55 millimeter, and uh, that's the best lens uh, 50 I've ever used. But um, this is really close, and it's actually sharper in a certain at certain apertures at super certain focal length distances than the Otis. But the Otis is uh, absolutely uh, free of chromatic aberrations. So, 135 uh, uh, Zeiss Milvis uh, f/2, uh, best, most optically perfect portrait lens made, though I will say I had previously, the one before this, I had the Nikkor 135F2 DC lens. That lens had a little bit creamier bokeh um, because you could do that, you know, that slight defocus control um, and you could just cream out the bokeh pretty good. So there's something special about that lens. Not nearly as optically perfect as this and it was hard to focus at F2. You couldn't really shoot it wide open unless you were on a tripod and your subject did not move. But um, uh, this one's awesome. Uh, it's, if, if you absolutely need a shot perfectly crisp without any flaws, that's, that's the lens to, to use. It's funny because I import the images into Lightroom and there's a checkbox for uh, lens calibration, or not calibration, but lens correction. And they have auto correction because they've got profiles built in for each of these lenses because uh, I pay for Lightroom every year and they update me to all the newest stuff. Um, I click the box on any of these, you know, you'll see like, okay, distortion corrects, um, vignetting corrects in the corners. On this lens, nothing happens. You click the box and nothing happens. It's like, <laughs> the lens is already perfect. Uh, it's kind of funny. Uh, so this is the Nikon 300mm. Uh, AFS f2.8 uh, lens and this is the version 2 so this was the lightest 300 millimeter 2.8 that they've made until they have an FL one now I, I don't even remember but the VR lenses got heavier and they didn't focus as close as this so it's the closest focusing 300 28 and it also uh, is the lightest so um, just as sharp as any of the newest ones. Um, and then I got the uh, really right stuff uh, Arca Swiss plate on the bottom there. Uh, just just so you know, this, uh, you know, I've said this before, but this this collection took me 23 years to assemble. You know, people always say, oh, when I win the lottery or if I was rich, I could, you know, buy that stuff. But it's not, it's not about being rich. It's about, um, uh, like a diamond is formed. Constant pressure over time. If you obsess about it for a quarter of a century, 
you too can collect all this crap. So, you know, uh, I'm not I'm not trying to show off. I'm just I'm just trying to show what I have. And I'm also testing the 4K output on this camera. This is my first 4K video. I'm trying to keep it quick because those file sizes get huge quick. Uh, anyway. Uh, this lens I bought for a New York trip. Also, this is a Sigma uh, 24 to 105 f/4 lens. Um, I wanted it because I wanted it's it's kind of a heavy lens, and I was carrying it on the DA10, but it uh, it's got optical stabilization, so I wouldn't have to carry my tripod all over the city, uh, though I did for you know some of the time. Um, but uh, I wanted to be able to shoot basically everything, not worry about pulling my camera gear out and swapping lenses and everything and uh, out in public. Uh, so that one covers, that one covered everything pretty well. Um, uh, over here on the end we got a new tripod that I'm trying out, the Oban BE-126, little ball head. Um, as you've probably seen in my Fuji comparison video, uh, weight I'm trying to shed weight when I travel so that's going to be the head on my travel setup uh, as well as the Fuji uh, X-T3 camera system uh, so lenses for the Fuji are here we've got the 56 f1.2 which I haven't got to use much yet I took a few test shots and it had really nice creamy bokeh plenty of background glare uh, I got the 35 f2 very sharp lens, I really like that one, and it's only six ounces, super compact. And then I got the 23 millimeter f2, uh, which is the equivalent of a 35 in full frame. Um, for flashes, I've got the Nikon SB800, which is my go-to flash with the diffuser on it. Uh, it's plenty powerful for anything I need, and it's a little bit more compact than the SB900, which I have here. Uh, the, Ni the 900 probably has less than I don't know, 300 shots on it, it's, I just almost never need to use it because I have the 800. Only time I would use that is when I want to do multiple speed lights in, in one uh, one setting, which I rarely do. Um, I'm no Joe McNally, you know. Uh, I follow him, he's, he's amazing. Uh, and then uh, over here I got the Godox TT685F for Fujifilm. What's impressive about these is these flashes are like $500 each. This flash is $150 <laughs> for the Fuji system and it comes with the radio trigger system. Uh, you don't have to buy that separate so it's like a $750 setup if you're going to Nikon. So that's pretty awesome. I always like to save money. I got the uh, SC17 flash extension cord. So when I was shooting weddings, I had the custom brackets uh, set up with the flash way up high. Uh, a couple reasons. Um, one being when you're shooting weddings, you want to look professional. Uh, if you look professional, people just treat you like a professional, and that's, that's an important thing. I'm going to talk about that actually on how to start shooting weddings. Uh, a little, I'm going to put together a little wedding photography series because I've, I've learned quite a bit about it over the years. Um, that's actually, I started shooting winning so I could afford all this kind of camera gear that I wanted. Uh, then I just kind of got stuck in it, shooting it for a while. Uh, here is a camera that I've always wanted. This is a Rolleiflex Twin Lens Reflex. Um, this is the 2.8 lens. Uh, so this is the, this is the big dog. Um, this one also is in really nice condition. I bought the best condition one I could find. Um, this one just kind of sits on my audio, audio rack as artwork, but I do intend to take it out and shoot it. Uh, I have film in the fridge ready to go, black and white of course. Uh, always liked the look of that, that camera, uh, it's just kind of iconic. And I saw a documentary, uh, Finding Vivian Meyer, uh, awesome documentary if you really like photography, uh, this lady took you know, like tens of thousands of pictures her entire life and nobody ever saw them until she died and they found her storage locker and now they're traveling around the world at a uh, gallery exhibit. It's pretty cool. 
Um, but that's the camera she used. That's the last camera that she used before she passed away. She had other Raleigh Flexes before that, the A, B, and C models. Um, this is a nodal plate, nodal slide, uh, for doing stitched panoramas. Uh, you clamp this into the tripod and you mount the camera in there. Um, so you can find the nodal point of the lens and uh, not get any parallax error when you're doing stitched panos. So that's helpful. This one's just a cheap one from eBay. You can get these from Really Right Stuff for like $150 or $170. This thing's like 30 bucks from eBay. It works. You know, it's got a, it's got a little Arca Swiss clamp. It's got a bubble level on top. Uh, the graduations on the side are kind of arbitrary, but, um, but it does work. You just have to remember what number you're at when you find your nodal point. Uh, anyway, uh, over here I got the bag for the 302.8. Um, I've got a Low Pro uh, Photo Trekker Pro AW, uh, all weather. If a back problem, I used to carry this big uh, commercial AW bag, I mean big, big bag, designed for like a full Hasselblad system. Um, I never had a Hasselblad system, but I um, always wanted one back then. I kind of missed the film days actually. Uh, everything was much simpler then. It was just like, okay, someday I'll have the Hasselblad system. And then everything went digital before that happened, so shot my dreams. Uh, <laughs> anyway, and the quality we're getting out of smaller cameras now is like, kind of negates the point of having the uh, uh, Hasselblad system. Anyway, I got for a video tripod, I got the Manfrotto uh, 028B legs. Uh, they've got the dual bars so you don't get any twist when you're using the fluid head. Uh, the head is the 501 HDV. I've owned two of these heads too. I got these because some people wanted me to shoot their wedding for video. So I did that. Uh, that is a big heavy uh, tripod too. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to have use for that very much anymore. I might do some more films with, uh, since this camera does 4K and I could do some kind of cinematic stuff. I don't know if I'm getting it into that much or not. Uh, over here is the uh, Enduro CLT-303. Uh, this is the new one with the uh, carbon fiber legs. Um, it's actually within about a tenth of a pound of the 214, uh, AT-214 aluminum tripod that the camera's on now. Um, but it's a lot stiffer, so vibrations uh, from wind and stuff aren't that big of an issue. Anyway, of course, on the Bellingham uh, Hadley Pro large uh, camera bag I got to put a pared down system in. It started out as like a D810 and two lenses. That's kind of what I carried with me uh, downtown and everything to shoot skylines. Um, I rarely take a zoom. But uh, I'm going to test out the one that we're viewing through right now, the 16 to 55, because I think it's uh, I think it's going to be a really good performer, especially on the uh, on the crop sensor. So um, I might use it a lot more. So that lens could be really flexible. Uh, so anyway, that's the state of the collection. Um, stay tuned for more photography. I'm going to have my wedding series coming up. Because there's a lot, a lot of things I wish I knew before I shot weddings, and uh, the business side of it is is pretty crazy, and uh, customers' expectations, pricing, inspiration, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so stay tuned for more, and thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.